Hello there, this is Dr. Mintz. I wanted to go over a case I found very interesting last night. This is a 60-year-old who came in with abdominal pain. I'm going to give you the usual opportunity to look over the images slowly. So I'll start here at the top of the abdomen and look closely at the structures as I'm going down here. Form in your mind where you think the abnormalities are. And also think about how you might describe them. Remember the essential steps are to identify an abnormality, describe the anatomy involved with the abnormality, and find a good way to describe the abnormality. Okay, so that's an overview. So hopefully a couple things have stood out to you. So I'll go back to the top and I'll start I'll point out some of the abnormalities. First of all, here you have the heart. You have the thoracic aorta coming through the, the aortic hiatus. And the aortic hiatus is defined by these reflections of the diaphragm, the diaphragmatic crura. That's C R U R A. The singular is crus. So behind the crura here, you have nodes. Those are retrocrural nodes, so this is described as retrocrural adenopathy. These masses don't belong here. This is the last place people get adenopathy usually, so even a one centimeter node is very abnormal in this area. If we go down a little farther, here you see the crura thickening, as they often do, as they get closer to the vertebra. Here you have some enlarged nodes scattered here and there. We'll go right for the big findings, though. So here you have a big mass here. Where is that? Well, here you have the psoas muscle. The psoas muscle. Those are retroperitoneal structures. Kidney on each side. Those are retroperitoneal. So here you have this structure that's right against the psoas, so that's retroperitoneal as well. And if I move a little bit like this, you can see that a part of that mass is actually insinuating itself posterior to the aorta. Then you have a mass over here interposed between the inferior vena cava and the aorta. So this is all abnormal mass, as is this. This is a typical appearance, although somewhat prominent, for adenopathy. So we have retrocrural adenopathy that you saw up higher. You have retroperitoneal adenopathy here. And this is a large aggregate of retroperitoneal adenopathy. If you look here, you have to be careful, but you can see that there are some normal vascular structures and normal bowel structures, but there are also some things that look nodule-like, and those are mesenteric nodes. Look at how large and confluent this retroperitoneal mass is here. It's encircling more than half of the abdominal aorta, and it's elevating this part of, looks like it's the duodenum, yeah, it's this portion of the duodenum, third portion that's crossing posteriorly behind the superior mesenteric artery. So this is a large aggregate of retroperitoneal adenopathy. Now as we go down into the pelvis, take note here that you see the abdominal aorta branching right here into left and right common iliac arteries. So here you have a large aggregate of lymphadenopathy in the upper pelvis adjacent to the iliac artery. So this could be called simply pelvic adenopathy, but more precisely it would be iliac adenopathy. And this is left iliac adenopathy. And if you follow it down farther, you normally do have some musculature here. You have the iliacus muscle on each side 
paralleling the iliac bone, and you have psoas muscle on each side. But you can see there's something additionally here, and that is adenopathy as well. Look over here. Where do you see an abnormality at this level? You can see it in the left pelvic sidewall over here. So medial to the left hip, Posterior to the external iliac artery, you have this aggregate, the soft tissue mass, and that's pelvic adenopathy, external iliac adenopathy, and if you follow that down, you can see at this point it's actually compressing the urinary bladder, and it's following very closely the vessels. It's no accident that adenopathy tends to occur near major vessels, the normal chains of lymph nodes often follow the vasculature as well. So here you can see that mass petering out. And let's see, I don't really see much in the way of inguinal lymphadenopathy. So this is a 60-year-old woman who came in with these troubles last night, had a CT, and I think this is probably going to be a new diagnosis of lymphoma. Now we'll look at it briefly in a coronal plane. And you get a whole different perspective now. Now you can see the psoas muscles and identify them more clearly as separate from the masses. So now masses like this stand out and you see mass here and mass here and little ones up here. And remember the retrocrural adenopathy that you saw along the border of the thoracic aorta as it entered the abdomen. And that's what you're seeing here, retrocrural adenopathy alongside of the distal thoracic aorta, just as it's penetrating the diaphragm and going into the abdomen. So this is a good example of lymphadenopathy. It shows how prominent it can be and is fairly typical for a new diagnosis of lymphoma.